Now then, here we are for another episode of my F1 Aston Martin Road to Glory series on F122. Now, as you can tell, we are in practice, and the reason for that is because I had a small issue with recording. I don't know why, but for some reason, it didn't actually record the first part of the episode. Essentially, the admin work, the upgrades, and just the kind of updates heading to this weekend. So, I figured, before we get into that, let me quickly plug the last race, guys. It was an incredible race. The title and the thumbnail should say it all. Go check it out. Link at the top right. The, Aust the Austrian Grand Prix with a sprint race in between, which was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, then come back to this one. But here we are. Paul Ricard, the French Grand Prix, and we're currently in FP1. So I'll give you a bit of an overview and uh, just a brief update on this weekend's plan. So. The scheduled upgrades arrived for the aero and the durability, so for the ICE and also a side pod upgrade which was a major one. So both of them are on the car and we've now unlocked more upgrades. I've also renewed my contract which was actually up in this uh, episode in between the last race and this one. So we've gone ahead and also renewed our contract with Aston Martin and of course as we want to try and make sure we get to the end of this series and get Aston Martin to the top. I had a couple of scares, I had my contract offer decline twice and then on the third time we eventually got it through and I've also purchased a few extra upgrades for the next few races. I believe we have three upgrades on the way, one for durability and two for performance, all of them are minor so yeah that's kind of the, the, the update. We're on the balanced tyre allocation this weekend as well so we'll have a, a standard set of tyres as we get through the race strategy program. The first lap was actually fouled as I invalidated so it didn't count but Pace was good, even across four laps, car working well, and it reasons to feel optimistic. As you can see, we scored pretty much maximum points after practice, and that is going to go a long way to help us out. And the good thing is, we've unlocked a lot of upgrades after the most recent batch. The only downside is, they're all quite expensive, and even the minor ones are around the 1,000 point mark, which is a bit hefty for a, a, a minor improvement. Either way, Hopefully we will kind of add up and accumulate, you know, discounts over the next few races and they'll become a bit more affordable. Here we are then, qualifying time at Paul Ricard and we're going to look to hopefully move into Q2. That would be pretty sweet. Qualifying in Austria didn't go according to plan, so look to hopefully improve here a bit. My qualifiers have been a bit messy, I'm not going to lie. I've struggled pretty much this entire series to put a decent qualifying together and the trend continues as we have a, a big moment out of turn two on our first time lap. So... Yeah, as I was saying, qualifying has been a bit of an issue. This time, though, you can see second, uh, second attempt, sector two, 50.338 currently on this lap. And this was actually an excellent lap up until this point. I was really, really happy with the lap. And then starting now, we just start to lose the rears a bit and they start to let go in this final part of the lap. We had a bit of a correction, but then through here, we just have a moment and we have a second one which just takes us offline and just trying to correct it, I end up invalidating, which was really frustrating. So yeah, that was um, far from ideal. I actually backed off, so I don't even know what the lap would have really been. But uh, yeah, we'll try again. Two minutes on the clock and we're going to get a fresh set of tires on. Let's see if we can get the job done, hopefully improve. I feel like there is some decent pace there and that lap we was on before was actually going to get us into the top 15. So here we go. Turn one, turn two this time. Not really much better. Okay, there's two minutes left in this session and we're in the drop zone. We need a quick lap or that's qualifying over for us. I didn't really attack the first apex enough and it, it really wasn't ideal because then that compromised my line through turn two. This section was mostly okay through the slow bit. Uh, nothing, you know, really too insane. Back straight, DRS open as we make our way down the Mistral straight. Look for the 100 meter board as you straight line break on the curbs down to fourth gear, then short shift to fifth. As uh, so I find that gives you a better exit. Didn't really get enough of the inside curb though, and again, struggling with oversteer. And for reference, we were, we were on a 50.338 on that previous lap we invalidated on. So we're down by pretty much two tenths on this one. So it really isn't the kind of lap I was hoping for. And I know at the time it wasn't that great. I was not happy with it. Here we go though, through sector three, this is where we started to struggle. This time no issues with the back end through the double right-hander. And now through the left, on the power, that's a lot better. And this lap is going to count by the looks of it. So, into the final couple of corners. 
looking to try and close out the lap. But to be fair, Sector 3 was absolutely on the money. I nailed it perfectly. Really, really good final sector. And in many ways, I actually recovered and saved my lap a little bit. Across the line, and we go P13 and get out of the drop zone. So a huge final sector, but it's not going to be enough as everybody else improves and it moves us straight back into the bottom five. And that is us out of qualifying yet again. A bit of a shame because I feel like that horrible first and second sector let us down because we got knocked out by just under two tenths. And that was more or less the margin at the second sector split. So I feel like on a clean lap, we probably could have got through in P15 and knocked Pierre Gasly out. But instead, here we are, 18th and out in qualifying stroll at the back. And we're down here with the Williams boys yet again. So still, not the end of the world. You saw Austria, we started P20 and we finished in P4. So what was not to say we can't produce a bit of magic yet again here at Paul Ricard. Here we are again then at La Castellet for another round of this year's Formula One World Championship. Renault took their first French Grand Prix win here all the way back in the inaugural race in 1906, but it was another 73 years before they could take their second. I'm sure Alpine will be pushing hard to delight the local fans here today. A lap of Paul Ricard then consists of 15 corners and a total length of around 3.6 miles. Drivers will need to position their cars carefully on the exit of the flat out turn 10, ready for the double apex right-hander at 11. Watch out for potential overtaking action at the end of the start finish straight and into the heavy braking zone of turn eight. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position. Edging out Lando Norris, he'll start from P2. Considering the rest of the grid we have, Leclerc, Hamilton, Sergio Perez and Russell, Ricardo. Fernando Alonso, Ocon, and Pierre Gasly. Sonoda, Bottas, Kevin Magnussen, and Joe. Mick Schumacher, Albon, Martinez, and Nicholas Latifi. Stroll and Carlos Sainz will start from the back of the grid. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Natalie Pinkham joins me once again in the commentary box. It's fantastic to have you with us today. I'm curious though, how do you think the drivers stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into turn one, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It'll keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. I'm not going to lie, I think this could actually be a good race for us. P17, but I think I could have got Q2 on a perfect lap in qualifying. Race pace, usually I feel is pretty decent here. So let's have a look at the strategy. So for this one, I'm going to load up the preset and medium to hard tire one stop. We're going to go approx 0.2 over on the fuel, which should get the job done. And then on pressures, we're going to go for the standard two on the front four on the rear that should hopefully see us through without having any issues on tire temp and that should also improve tire wear i think points are on the table i really do i need to get a good start and have a decent first lap if we're like p15 in the lap one i think we can cook so let's get into it and let's see what happens right then time for the french grand prix decent grid slot let's get to it very quick five lights and i get a poor start not a bad reaction, just didn't find the grip as we bog down. Signs looks for the move. I'm gonna try and fight back though around the outside. Back up to P17, which is where we started. Schumacher Albon side by side up ahead as I've got a car looking at my inside, also a car up ahead. And it's all kicking off here. Let's try and see if I can follow Albon through. There we go, we get past Schumacher. That's P16 for us. Onto the back straight then. Now time for the real acid test. Do we have the straight line speed? Looks like we do. Schumacher's closing in. I've got a slight tow from Albon as we actually get a trap limit warning. Just going a bit too wide. 
Schumacher tried to go up the inside there, so I took a wider line. Luckily, he kept his nose out of it, but we'll see if we can put some more pressure on and make up a few more places. That's going to take the pressure off from behind. As I think I can pass Albon. Usually, we are better than the Williams. They're not really a concern. I just wonder if the car that went off ahead is Alonso, who's losing time to the cars ahead and got damage. I guess we'll see now the pits. That will confirm it. Yes, he does. Alonso pits. Wanted to try and look up the inside there on Albon, but didn't quite get the rotation. Still P15, end of lap one. Decent start to this race. And I think we can get Albon here. I feel like I've got way more pace than him. And if we keep up the Alfa Romeo's, that would be encouraging, to say the least. Took the bollard there with us. I wonder if I could go for the move here, if I keep the battery on. Have to get off the throttle there a little bit as we lose momentum. But we're going to go through on Albon. Got some understeer, just ran a bit wide, but that's a nice move. Crucial move, of course, a direct arrival. And we're now sitting behind the Alfa Romeo's as we head into DRS and Airwood on lap three. Got to say, the pace is looking pretty decent right now. Personal best. Bottas can't keep up with the top 11, for now anyway. I can tell that AI have turned their engine down a little bit compared to the first two laps because we're keeping up nice and easy now. Not really using too much battery, so we've got to try and see if I can recharge and get back to 100% and basically start to plan out the race and also my strategy long term. Just a quick update, up ahead looks like one of the Alpha Tauris and Kevin Magnussen have dropped off from the train so those two are now possibly vulnerable as they could maybe go our way and that would now put us into a points battle. I'm trying to put some pressure on here. We're catching the three cars ahead actually features two Alpha Tauris. I thought it was two cars, it's actually a three car scrap so that would definitely put us in the points, so I'm looking to just split the two Alfa Romeo's here and get in between them and basically be ready to pounce when we need it. I've got enough battery charge that I can go for this. There we go. Up the inside of the show and we get the move done. Giving them a bit of a squeeze on the exit, but we're through. And when I feel like I can close the gap to the next three cars ahead, I'll look to pass Bottas. The pace seems pretty decent today, especially in Sector 3. Well, let's see, I'm a little bit far back from Bottas here. We'll use all the battery we've got this lap to try and make some progress. Oh, that wasn't ideal. Let's see, I'll try and push like crazy and use all the battery to try and close the gap in this final sector. No DRS, but we're close to dropping Bottas. We'll keep pushing here. Personal best. Okay, be aware. The grip levels are gonna start falling away soon. Fitting he said that as I have a huge snap. Not quite close enough to get DRS. We're closing. We just need a little half scrap between them, and that should do the trick. We've dropped the Alfa Romeo's behind, but I just need a little bit more for me to close the gap. That could be Albon out of the race, possibly. Oh no, my ERS has failed. Not now. I've got no battery as it is, and it stayed on. Gotta be careful. Put the power down here. My battery is just stuck. Okay, there we go. Finally got my battery back. We've got absolutely nothing left now, which is far from ideal. I feel like I'm starting to struggle on tyres a little bit. Bottas, I think, may have got himself back in DRS range. I'm also trying to recover some battery, which is, you know, the big issue here. I've now lost a bit of time to the two cars ahead. But we're approaching the pit stop phase, so this could be interesting. Ooh, Lando's out. Lando was P1. He was the race leader. Taking through the yellow flags. 
That's a massive moment. Lando was leading the race and had the fastest lap. That's devastation for McLaren. Right, Bottas will most likely have a look here. I'm trying to save battery. I'm actually going to use a little bit. I'd rather keep Bottas behind. The longer we took the pass and the less convincing the move was, the better it was for me to stay ahead. And that's now locked it in as he tried to go for that stupid overtake into the chicane. So that keeps us in front. So we'll box now. Right, here we go. The pits. I'll do. Bottas will join us. We've got a slight gap thanks to that little half-half overtake attempt from him. Lost a bit too much time into Magnussen and Sonora at the end there, but I just couldn't keep up. I just didn't have enough battery to fight and push. So yeah, just unfortunate really. Great stop, 2.3 and no hold up whatsoever. Bottas loses a bit of time and we've actually jumped Magnussen. Now that is big, big shout out to the mechanics and the boys for that one, but we've jumped K-Mag, he's probably going to straight away re-overtake us in the back straight as I struggle so much more than the AI on cold tyres, but Bottas also losing a chunk of time, so we've got what we want, Snow stayed out another lap, which means Gas is going to stay out another lap after that as well, so it's all to play for actually, to be fair, I think um, this isn't over yet, Magnuson will pass though here, and I'm just going to basically follow him and recharge. I think it makes perfect sense. Um, so we'll try and get back to 100%. We can use that battery to close down on the Alpha Tauris. So there we go. Let's try and follow K Mag's lead. So Lance in the pit lane along with everyone else. I wonder if Bottas actually got a wing change. That might explain why he had such a long stop and why he's so far behind. Well, let's see. There's Joe. We'll be ahead of him just so he doesn't quite pull off the overcut. But now he's going to be on cold tyres, so he'll struggle to keep up with me and K Mag. Let's make sure we keep up with Magnuson though. We'll make sure we get that DRS. I wonder if Magnuson got a wing change as well. I mean, he's now five seconds behind Sonoda, who he was battling with. Either way, he doesn't seem that fast. I feel like I've got way more pace than Magnuson here, so um, I may look to pass him in fairness. I won't do it here because we don't have great pace in the first sector. There's Alonso pits, but we'll look to pass him on the back straight. Right, let's try and get the move here. Let's see what kind of straight line speed we have. I'll try and go for it now. It's going to need a bit of late braking. Nice. Didn't quite get all the curb on the second apex, but it was a nice enough move that we've also managed to gap Magnuson. Okay, we've broken the DRS. Now let's see if we can just chip away at Sonoda. We're P11. So Snow has no DRS, so it's going to be a, just a direct 1v1 in pace. And we'll just see if we can just chip away that gap and try to gradually catch up over the remaining laps of this race. We've got a bit of battery to use as well, so let's try and be smart with our racecraft here. Ooh, okay, Carlos in bits. I forgot about that. So that is going to move us into the top 10 and into the points, which is a good thing because... I'm not sure if I'm a lot quicker than Sonoda. We are pretty much matched on the last lap. So, yeah, no bad news is Science isn't far behind. So, we could have a Ferrari issue very soon. Right, Science has dropped Magnussen, so he's not dragging him with him, which is good. I'm not going to lie. Science might be the solution. I'm not going to fight, there's no point. He might be able to drag us towards Sonoda if I can keep up with his DRS. Wow, science is too strong. <laughs> Way too strong. I tried to keep up, but... We're out of the RS. I got it on the back straight, that was it. I think we might just fall short today, unless something happens ahead of us. The Alpha Tire is a bit too fast, a bit too strong. Another warning. Gonna have to be careful now. Rest of the race. Still trying to push and go flat out. I'm about the same pace as Magnus and Joe Bottas without using any battery. Signed Sonoda still battling ahead. Personal best on that lap using the battery leftovers as I was actually getting caught by the cars behind so I just had to open a gap. Also that was my last chance to see if I could catch Sonoda but he's too fast. 
so we'll have to start with P11 unless something happens. Oh my god, is that in front? No, it's behind. Oh my god, that's the hope that kills you. I thought I was on for a point. Magnuson's out of the race though. Here we go then. Last lap. And we're just going to fall short, P11. And just miss out on the points. The snapping wins. Currently on for a personal best. To see if I can get the lap. Probably not. I've run out of battery, so I'm not going to have anything to use out of here. Yeah. Exit wasn't quite good enough, but still we'll take it. Decent performance, decent recovery, and decent race pace. And that's the end of the race. We'll see you in part four, mate. Red Bull pulling out all the stops today. What a great win. So, Natalie, what do you think helped them deliver this result? I'd say it was down once again to good, consistent driving, nailing the corners, working to the track conditions, and perfecting the team strategies. They got all those things right today, and the results speak for themselves. Here come today's winners. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently. It's clear to see that they've put in the work and they should be proud of the victory they've secured here. There we go then, confirmation of the results, and it's a 1-2 for Red Bull. They absolutely dominate. Checo up to second place and looking very strong behind Verstappen, who dominated with the fastest lap. Leclerc rounds off the podium with both Mercs in the top five. Ricardo P6 to McLaren, but it has to be said, Norris was leading the race, and who knows if maybe he could have just won the race for McLaren here today. Ocon in the first of the Alpines in P7 ahead of Gasly, Sainz in P9 and Snowder P10. We just miss out P11, no points for us today ahead of both Alfa Romeos, ahead of also both Haskars, Stroll, Alonso, Albon, Latifi and then Norris at the back. So standings after 12 rounds, we're still 13th, Sonoda overtakes us by a point. Realistically I think P11 is what we should aim for this season but we'll see, one step at a time. Constructors also maybe P6, it's going to be a bit hard as both Alfa Tauri scored points today but We'll try and aim for it. Either way, guys, that is going to be it from me here today for the French Grand Prix. Leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me out. As always, a big shout out to the channel members for supporting the channel and the content. As always, check out the two videos on your screen if you haven't seen them already. And I'll see all of you in the next one. Until then, take care and let's go back from me.